Just look at all this beautiful scrap wood from an old fence that someone gave me. And I took it to the shop and I cut it down to the lengths that I wanted for this particular project. I love that dog ear top at the, at the top of it. Um, it's going to make this project extra special. I put this two by at the bottom and clamped it all together with my little wood clamps. It was kind of warped, but I think this is going to work out just fine. Now, I cut this pumpkin out on my Cricut, and we're going to do a reverse stencil. So I'm going to use this transfer tape, and I'm going to burnish it onto my transfer tape, the image onto my transfer tape. Then I'm just going to simply place it where I want it on this wood, and I'm going to scrape it with my little scraper and make sure that it gets on there good. And then I'm going to just peel this transfer tape off, and voila, we have a pumpkin on our wood. I'm going to use the Vintage Linen by DIY and this awesome DIY paintbrush. You can get any DIY products that you want from uh, unicorndustdesigns.com. Uh, Sammy over at Unicorn Dust Designs has a beautiful website, and you can get any of the DIY products from her. So I am just painting over this just haphazardly. I do want to get around the edges of the pumpkin, but I'm just haphazardly. I want to let some of that wood still show through. And then when I'm, I'm going to do the edges too. I don't believe I did the back. I think I just did the edges. Then I'm going to take my trusted tweezers and peel this off. It is still a little bit wet, so I'm going to be careful not to smear it. Get paint where I don't want it. But look how beautiful that is to reveal that wood from behind that vinyl. Now, I had this burlap, wide piece of burlap ribbon in my stash. Someone um, had it left over from a wedding, and of course, they asked me if I wanted it because they know I craft, and you know I said yes. Never turn down craft supplies. So I'm just gonna wrap it around. I'm gonna use my stapler. You could use hot glue if you want. I just wanted to use my stapler and I'm going to just staple that down to the back side. Then I'm gonna flip it over, and here we go with, um, okay, so I'm gonna make a bow first. And I'm just gonna take another piece of that, and I'm just gonna cut it and pinch it in the middle. I'm gonna fray the edges a little because I like that look. And then I'm gonna pinch it in the middle and use a zip tie, I believe. I couldn't decide if I wanted to just leave it on there. Just the bow, just the bow, or if I wanted to cinch up the bow and the ribbon or just the bow. So I decided I wanted to cinch up the ribbon in the back as well because I like the way that looks. Now, I got all these florals from Dollar Tree last year, but I did see them there this year. And I'm just going to take these little needle nose pliers, have a wire cutter in them, and I'm just gonna cut them into pieces. I'm just gonna poke these little pieces of floral where I want. I really wanted to use that, but I couldn't make it look right. Um, and I just got in my stash, and I have a container that says, floral bits and some of these came out of the floral bit bin and just bits and pieces can really make a project turn out good so I just kept messing with it till I got it the way that I wanted it and I did end up stapling behind the bow to keep that burlap up because when I put the florals on it kind of got heavy so it started kind of pulling it down so I did staple it behind the bow. You can't even see it once I'm done. And there we go. Here is our final finished product. Let me know what you think about this beauty. I'm in love. Keeping this one for myself. 
this video has given you some inspiration to go out there and find some old wood. Look on the curbs when people are replacing their fences or check Facebook Marketplace. They're always giving away scrap wood, reclaimed wood. And if you don't have a jigsaw, they're pretty inexpensive, but see if your neighbor has one or a friend has one. It's super easy and look at what you can make. So if you're loving these DIYs, don't forget to give this video a thumbs up and make sure you're subscribed. Look down there under this video at the subscribe and make sure you're subscribed and hit that little bell so you get notified every time that I upload a video. You won't miss anything. No telling what we're gonna do over here. Okay, let's get back to crafting. Okay, this one started out as a little bit of a challenge, but I quickly figured out how to remedy the situation. I have these three boards. I believe they were all 18 inches. Oh, I think there's only two boards, sorry. I think they were 18 inches, but I thought I would glue them and clamp them, but because they were so warped, the, the clamps did not work. So I had these paint stir sticks and I decided that I would cut them and put them on the back and it would hold those two pieces together. So I took them out to the shop and I cut them. I just taped them all together and made one cut and got them the length that I needed. Now I decided that I was going to use some of this canvas. Um, what is it? It is a, you know, you put it down when you're painting. Drop cloth. There you go. It's a drop cloth. And I'm just going to glue and staple it to the back. So that's going to kind of hold those two pieces together a little bit. And then I'm going to uh, glue at the high points where I think it's going to touch. And then I'm going to go back and staple them. But this is going to help hold these two boards together on the back. I do go back and staple them. I think I do put some tacks in as well. Like I did not want these going anywhere. I did. I used those little tacks and I didn't want to show hammering too much because it was shaking the camera, but that's what I did. I was making sure it didn't go all the way through. I did check before I started hammering it that the nail wouldn't be too thick, but I was just making sure. Now I'm going to use the color Summer Crush by DIY, which is a beautiful, beautiful fall orange pumpkin color. Now these little dog-eared pieces of wood, I cut them down to the size that I wanted them. And I'm going to do one in this Summer Crush. I'm going to do the other one in Queen Bee. And I'm only doing the front and the sides because you're not going to see the back. And I just kind of dabbed it on those really rough parts. And, you know, if the wood shows through, that's good. And I didn't do a solid, solid coat like you know, I, I was okay if some of that wood is showing through because this is a very rustic. If you don't like rustic, this is not going to be the one for you. Now, I have these little tumbling tower blocks, and I decided to paint them because I'm going to put them behind these. These are going to be pumpkins, and I'm going to put those little tumbling tower blocks behind them to raise them off to make more of a 3D effect. You can see there that I used a little bit of dry brushing of the opposite color on them. And um, I'm not sure why I showed you, showed you those. Okay, this is uh, Farm Fresh by DIY. And I'm giving it a rough coat. The front and the sides. And then, um, what am I doing here? Oh, I'm finishing it up. Sorry. Um, yeah, and this wood is so dry, it was really soaking the paint up. Okay, so now it's almost dry. So I have got these little pieces of twigs that came from Dollar Tree and a whole bag of them. But normally I just go out to my yard and cut some branches off of a bushy tree thing that we have out in the yard. I don't even know what it is. It's hideous. But anyway, I will cut branches off of it and it makes for really good crafting. Now to keep that where it needs to be until it dries, I decided to put some painter's tape on each side. And then once it was dry, it stayed on there really nicely. Now, I got these fall stencils from the company Essential Stencil, Essen, 
I cannot say it, y'all, essential stencils. And I'm going to use layered chocolate on the Hello and the FLL. And I'm using a little pouncer, sponge pouncer. And this did bleed a little bit. You're going to see that it bled a little bit. But it's okay because it's rustic and I'm going to sand it. Um, so I'm not, we're not going to get too crazy about that. Then I used the orange, the Summer Crush, and then a little bit of brown on the leaf. And now I'm just going to take my little sanding block and just sand over it a little bit to rough it up to make it match the rest of everything. And I'm going to take some dark wax by DIY. And I'm just going to brush it with a chippy brush. Um, or this is not a chippy brush. This is just an old worn out brush. I would normally use a chippy brush. Don't know why I grabbed this one. Maybe all my chippy brushes were dirty. Um, so I'm going to just put a little bit of that brown wax around the edges. We're still trying to age these and make them look um, you know, rustic. So wherever you think it should look dark, just put some. There's no right or wrong to di distressing and making things look old. I guess I decided I wanted some underneath that tape, so I just put it under there. And this one needed some under its tape too. Okay, okay, you get the idea of how to do this, right? I must have left a clip in thinking that I had deleted it. You know, sometimes I do that with paint, with uh, recording. I really do like how these turned out. Um, I'm going to take the tape off. I'm going to glue those little tumbling tower blocks with a little bit of that quick, quick, whatever that's called, tight bond, quick, quick and thick, I think is what it's called. And I'm going to put that on the back, add a little bit of that, and a little bit of hot glue. So the hot glue will help it to, st to stick fast. And then the other glue is going to be a really good permanent hold. And now I'm going to do the same thing on the other side so that I can flip them over and stick them to our background sign. Let me know what you think about my color choices. Do you like these color choices for fall? I really love that Farm Fresh color and I love that Summer Crush and Queen Bee. I love them all. Just going to hold that down long enough. I'm afraid that's not dry yet. So I'm going to take some raffia. And I'm just going to glue it around the top of this. And I discovered a fun little trick. When my girls were little and we used to make lots of hair bows. Crazy hair bows back in the early 90s. And so I learned this little trick with a dowel rod. And you would wrap the the ribbons around the dowel rod and wet it and put it in the oven and it would make those little curly ribbons. So I thought, hmm, I'm going to wet this a little bit, wrap it around there and dry it and see what happens. And it worked out great. So I'm going to put it around there. I don't know if I show you that I spritzed it with a little bit of water. Let me move some stuff out of the way. Nope, I didn't show you that I spritzed it with some water. And yeah, I burned that a little bit, but it's okay because it's rustic, right? And I didn't curl all of them. I just curled a few of them. There, I showed you. I spritzed it, that one. And then I was a little more careful not to hold the heat on this one as long. We don't want anything catching on fire out in our little craft cottage. And so that's what I did for those. And then I'm going to take some of this Spanish moss from Dollar Tree. And just glue a little bit along the bottom as if it looks like our little pumpkins are sitting in a patch. Patch of little dead grass, I guess. These are these pumpkins are growing in Texas. Because you know, we have lots of dead grass in Texas about now. So I'm just going to use a little hot glue and 
poke it up. I'm going to use that little tool to poke that up in there where I want it. We'll just hot glue that down so it doesn't go anywhere. And I had that little stick that came out of that Spanish moss. And I thought, well, that would look kind of cute to stick that little stick down in there. So I just put a little hot glue on it and stuck it in there. Now to finish off the back, I'm going to take some more of that canvas drop cloth and cover the back side. But before I do that, I'm going to make a hanger. So I tied a knot in each end of this hanger. I'm going to put a little dab of hot glue there. And then I'm going to use my stapler to staple that down. I'm going to do that on both sides. And then I will take that drop cloth that I cut to the right size, size and I'm just going to hot glue it down on the sides and press it in really good so that it goes to the wood and through the drop cloth. And I feel like that's going to hold it really good. Then I use the tap bond quick and thick in between on the top and the bottom. Then I'm going to hot glue the other side too. And this is a nice finished back that won't scratch the wall. Okay, I hope that you enjoyed seeing what all you can do with reclaimed wood and you got some great inspiration, some great ideas. But remember to be still and know that he is God.